first hardcore show I ever saw uh, would have to be one of the early Discord bands. I saw all of them. Uh, I was in high school in 1980 uh, before I moved to Boston, which is where a lot of people think I'm from, uh, which my heart is from. Uh, you know, but but I actually was in Virginia at that time and saw Government Issue and uh, Minor Threat are two of the ones that really stand out uh, at the uh, at the old 930 Club at Ninth and F Street, and then. Uh, at some of the halls, you know, the, in the early days we had a lot of hall shows and there were some great, great shows there. So I saw most of the Discord bands uh, in those days, uh, 1980, uh, before I moved to Boston. The club I miss most from back in the day is probably uh, the Media Workshop in Boston, owned by uh, a crazy collaboration and good creative energy. Uh, a lot of good shows there and a certain amount of uh, unique energy that I think I've never really replicated anywhere else. I would definitely say one show that really changed my life musically in terms of realizing, like in terms of a metamorphosis for me, believe it or not, is uh, seeing uh, the Gang of Four show. Um, in Georgetown in 1980 probably and um, Gang of Four, you know, their first album, um, the Red Album Entertainment uh, was, was uh, amazing album musically and just seeing them, it wasn't a hardcore show which, you know, I've always been the hardcore guy but uh, just seeing that show, I just remember it and I believe R.E.M. opened up that show. So, uh, you know, so how many people know R.E.M. now versus, versus Gang of Four, but Gang of Four in, uh, in, ba in uh, Georgetown, Washington, D.C. Yes, there is no exaggerating the greatness of the bands that are legendary. So I would say Bad Brains, Black Flag, Minor Threat. Um, those bands, the shows were electric. HR, first of all, you haven't lived until you've had HR jump into the pit during one of the reggae songs, put his arm around you, sweaty, just pouring sweat, and start to skank with you, which he did with me at a couple different times over the years that I'm sure he wouldn't remember that, but it was great. Like, I just loved it, you know, and we'd both sing together for a couple verses or whatever. But, you know, um, I saw HR do a standing backflip, just like if I were talking to you right now, and all of a sudden, with no warning, I just did a backflip, upside down, complete back. I, I've never seen that. I've never seen professional acrobats do that. It was, it blew my freaking mind. And uh, so HR and and uh, Ian Mackay and and Henry Rollins and Dez were were all deserving of the of the of the legendary status that they have. Yeah, I wish I'd seen my two top all-time favorite bands, which is The Clash and The Jam, and I never saw either one of them. Um, the Clash, the only time I could have gone, I had a chance to go see them when they played with The Who in uh, Shea Stadium, I believe, in, uh, it was, I forget what year, but it was toward the end of The Clash's run, and um, I couldn't do it because I couldn't afford the ticket. Um, and then uh, The Jam, as Jam fans know, never really broke in America. So uh, while they were number one in Europe and in England, uh, they never quite got to that level. And so they didn't do much touring in the States. And uh, so I never got to see the jam or the clash. And I would, uh, if I could hit a time rewind button, I would just do whatever it took, rob a bank, uh, you know, sell, the, sell pints of blood, whatever, to get enough money as an 18 year old kid to go see the clash and the jam. I learned how to sing in church choirs growing up, and uh, so I, I really learned, so people know me as having a strong sense of melody, and that's because of all my church choir directors and high school play directors. And as far as, uh, as, far as uh, the, the actual bands that influenced me as a singer, Chicago, um, uh, James Taylor, um, you know, bands that are total, America, <laughs> the band America, <laughs> You know, Sister Golden here, but uh, Pure Prairie League. There's a lot of uh, sort of like that. I got a lot of a little bit of redneck in me, and I'm proud of that. And uh, you know, so so I have a lot of Southern rock in my blood from that early '70s era. You know, my older sister had a lot of that stuff. So uh, I learned from some really amazing 
singers, and probably the top of that is Chicago. You know, 25 or 6 to 4, and Saturday in the Park, and all their hits, and plus a lot of ones that weren't hits. Sense of melody, unbeatable. I would say SSD Control's peak was probably 82, 83, and yes, they were fucking magic. The energy, the, the, you know, and there was always that tension between Al and Springer, and that was palpable on stage, which added to the tenseness of the show. There are very few bands that I've been in or played with that have been as utterly a musical fist as SSD Control in 1982, you know, especially after Get It Away came out, you know, that was, that was a musical fist. And you know, Sick of It All, I think, classifies as a musical fist. I'd like to think DYS classified as that. You know, uh, AF, you know, there's a number of bands that do, but, but no one topped SSD Control. Yeah, I get super excited about playing in uh, Spain, for one thing. I have a lot of really good friends in Spain, a lot of great musical. Uh, experiences there and great musician friends that I've actually played with, uh, Spanish guys. Um, and uh, South America has been really, really great. Uh, you know, I kind of view my touring life as the way a father would view his children, right? So all of them are special and, and everybody asks me, oh, do you like Down By Law better or Dag Nasty or DYS or all? And I would always say the same thing, which is absolutely true, is I love all of them. And, and they all are different sides of me, you know? It's like The Who has the album Quadrophenia. I'm, I'm quadrophenic. No, I never thought it would be, you know, in DYS in 1981 and 1982 and getting in fights with jocks, uh, you know, in Kenmore Square or whatever, you know, Copley Plaza, you know, places South Boston, wherever we were, we'd get, get in some sort of scrap. But no, you know, those were, if you told me then, yeah, you'll be, you know, in your 50s and still making music and had the opportunity to go around and talk about, you know, true independence, you know, and that's ultimately what hardcore is supposed to be about in punk rock. Independence. Independence. No herd. Out of step. Against the grain. Great album titles. Harder to do in real life. Do it, you know. But, uh, you know, yeah, Brotherhood 1982 to, uh, you know, 2017. I'm a, I'm a lucky cat. Number one, be yourself. Easy to say, harder to do. Number two, make a difference. Easy to say, harder to do. A life well lived, looking back, you're gonna be so glad if you can say, I was myself and I lived a good life. Doesn't mean you're gonna change the world every day, but try. What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? What can I say?